Hello, my name is Associate Professor Alan Moss. I am a gastroenterologist and interventional endoscopist. I am Head of Unit for Gastroenterology and Endoscopic Services at Western Health in Melbourne, Australia. I am here with my colleague, Dr. Dalit Manjira, a gastroenterologist and interventional endoscopist. We are also affiliated with the Division of Medicine for the University of Melbourne. On behalf of our co-authors, we would like to thank Gastrointestinal Endoscopy for this opportunity to discuss our recently accepted original manuscript entitled Cold Snare Piecemeal EMR of Large Sessile Colonic Polyps Greater Than or Equal to 20 Millimeters is Feasible, Safe and Effective. I am the corresponding author and Dalit is the first author. Can you please comment on what prompted us to perform this study? EMR is the standard of care for endoscopic resection of large sessile colonic polyps at most Western academic endoscopy centres. The conventional EMR technique uses submucosal injection followed by hot snare polypectomy. However, the electrosurgical current delivered through the snare is the main cause for adverse events following EMR, in particular perforation, bleeding and post-polypectomy syndrome. Cold snare polypectomy has recently rapidly gained international acceptance as an effective and safe technique for resection of small polyps. For medium-sized polyps, there is limited but promising evidence to support the safety of this technique, in particular for serrated polyps. However, for large sessile colorectal polyps, size 20 millimeters or greater, the evidence for cold snare EMR is very limited, particularly for adenomatous polyps. With increasing awareness of the enhanced safety profile of cold snaring, we have been performing an increasingly large volume of cold snare piecemeal EMR cases for large sessile polyps as an alternative modality to conventional hot snare EMR technique. However, the main concern with CSP EMR is the potential for reduced efficacy with the possibility of incomplete resection. Traditionally, the concern has been raised that without electric cautery, that complete resection will not be possible or that recurrence rates will be higher. This prompted us to perform this study to assess the outcomes of cold snare piecemeal EMR for large sessile colonic polyps to determine if this is true or whether the technique is as effective as conventional EMR, but potentially with lower rates of adverse events. Can you comment briefly on how this study was performed? We performed a retrospective multi-centre study of all cold snare EMR procedures at five Australian academic endoscopy centres for sessile polyps of the colon size 20 millimetres or greater over two years, from January 2016 to December 2017. We looked at the EMR procedure and also the subsequent two surveillance colonoscopies. While all lesions removed by CSP EMR were included in the study, it is important to note the main details of the polyps for which we did not perform cold snare piecemeal EMR during this period. Firstly, any lesions suspicious for submucosal invasion or with an increased risk of occult submucosal invasion, such as QDOPIT pattern 5 or Paris classification 02A plus C with a non-granular surface, we did not perform CSP EMR, but rather these patients had conventional hot snare EMR. Secondly, any lesion with a large Paris 01S component, such as a component greater than 10 millimetres in size, where on-block cold snare resection of that 1S component would have been difficult to achieve due to inability to cut through the thick polyp base, was another example of polyps for which we did not use this technique. Thirdly, rectal lesions. Due to the especially critical nature of oncological resection in the rectum, with the potential for adverse functional impact on the patient if the resection was incomplete or unnecessarily piecemeal, these cases were also deemed not suitable for cold snare EMR and required either conventional EMR or ESD as appropriate for the particular lesion. Can you briefly summarise the differences between the techniques of cold snare piecemeal EMR and conventional EMR? Sure. From, a convic from an equipment perspective, the only difference is that we use a dedicated cold snare which has a stiff, thin monofilament structure. This enhances tissue capturing and the ability to cut through the tissue. From a technique perspective compared to conventional EMR, number one, the cold snare is deliberately positioned 
over a slightly wider margin of normal colonic mucosa adjacent to the polyp margin. We use greater downward angulation of the snare tip onto the colonic mucosa together with slightly greater suction during snare closure to enhance tissue capture. We don't tent the ensnared polyp tissue away from the colonic wall, but rather we continue the cold snare resection while downward pressure onto the mucosa is maintained with the snare until resection is, com is complete. Extra care is taken to achieve contiguous resections by placing the snare edge onto one to two millimeters of resected submucosa within the resection defect. After each snare resection, the exposed submucosa is irrigated with the auxiliary water channel to expand the submucosal plane to reduce the risk of deep mural injury. Overlapping further resections are performed until all visible polyp tissue was excised with clear and wide margins. Any suspected residual polyp tissue within the EMR defect was further excised with the cold snare following water irrigation of the EMR site. Please note that many of these modifications are possible due to the enhanced safety of the cold snare EMR technique and would not be recommended during conventional EMR technique. Thank you. Can you summarise your key findings? Our key findings that were that over a 24 month period, CSP EMR was performed on 204 polyps in 186 patients with all polyp size greater than or equal to 20 millimetres. At surveillance colonoscopy, the EMR scars were carefully inspected with high definition white light, narrowband imaging and were biopsied for histology. At first surveillance colonoscopy, which we term SC1, surveillance colonoscopy 1, 164 polyps or 80% of polyps at a median interval of 150 days showed residual or recurrent polyp in nine cases or 5.5%. Following a normal SC1 examination, at second surveillance colonoscopy, SC2, for 113 polyps or 72.9% and a median interval of 18 months following the index EMR, there was late residual or recurrent polyp found in four cases, which is in 3.5% of cases. Persisting intraprocedural bleeding during EMR occurred in four patients or 2.2% that required therapy and the therapy was successfully uh, completed endoscopically in all cases. Seven patients or 3.8% experienced self-limiting clinically significant post-EMR bleeding that did not require therapy. One patient or 0.6% of patients in the cohort required overnight observation for non-specific abdominal pain post EMR that resolved spontaneously. Importantly, no patients experienced perforation, post polypectomy syndrome, nor deep mural injury. Can you please comment on how our adenoma recurrence rates compared to results for conventional EMR? Looking at adenoma recurrence following conventional EMR, the current benchmark is the result from the interventional arm of the SCAR study from Professor Burke's team in Sydney. We're using snare tip soft coagulation circumferentially around the EMR margin following conventional EMR, resulting in a 5.2% recurrence rate at SC1, compared to 21% recurrence rate in the conventional EMR arm without soft coagulation. Our results with a 5.5% recurrence rate are on par with the interventional arm of the SCAR study, suggesting an extremely good outcome for cold snare EMR recurrence. Furthermore, our late recurrence rate at SC2 of 4% is identical to that previously shown by the Australian Colonic EMR study published in 2015 for conventional EMR outcomes. We believe that these excellent results were achieved by a combination of appropriate lesion selection for cold snare EMR technique and by following a meticulous cold snare EMR technique during procedures with the modifications from conventional EMR, as I have previously discussed, that are possible due to the intrinsic safety afforded by cold snare resection. As a caveat, it's very important to comment that we cannot directly compare our retrospective study with the SCAR study for multiple reasons, but especially our retrospective study design compared to the randomised trial design for the SCAR study, our exclusion criteria for polyps that were not suitable for cold snare EMR means we likely excluded many polyps with more complex morphology, which may have been prone to more difficult resection and higher recurrence rates, 
whereas the SCAR study would have included all of these likely more difficult cases, hence making their low recurrence rate even more impressive. Nonetheless, despite these limitations, we believe that our study does show that cold snare EMR can achieve low recurrence rates comparable to best practice conventional EMR for, suitable, for, for suitably selected lesions. Indeed, we have shown that electrocautery is not essential for complete resection of large sessile colonic polyps and that cold snare piecemeal EMR technique is a valid option. Furthermore, our results show that adverse event rates were low compared to other previous studies of conventional EMR. Can you comment on the safety aspects of cold snare EMR compared with other published results for conventional EMR? Sure. Both the rates of adverse events and the severity of these events in our study were low. We had no cases of perforation, no cases of post polypectomy syndrome, and low rates of intraprocedural bleeding, and low rates of clinically significant post-EMR bleeding, compared with published studies of conventional EMR, where perforation rates are approximately 1-2%, to and clinically significant post-EMR bleeding rates are approximately 6%. What would be the take home message that you would like to convey to listeners? I'd like to let the listeners know that to the best of our knowledge, our study is the largest that has evaluated the safety and efficacy of cold snare piecemeal EMR technique for large sessile colonic polyps. A large proportion of our cases were adenomas, suggesting that this technique is feasible, safe and effective, not only for SSAs, but also for tubular and tubulovillus adenomas. Our adverse event and adenoma recurrence rates were both lower than shown in previous studies of conventional EMR technique. Therefore, even allowing for the limitations of our retrospective study design, our data provides a strong indication that cold snare piecemeal EMR should be considered a viable technique for excision of suitably selected large sessile colonic polyps and is worthy of prospective or randomised studies to better define the lesions best suited to cold snare piecemeal EMR technique and to determine the place of cold snare piecemeal EMR technique within our EMR armamentarium. We envisage that in time, our study will influence practice. We believe that the enhanced safety of cold snare piecemeal EMR will lead to this, this technique becoming more popular. It may also enable cases to be performed at lower acuity centres if safety is confirmed in other studies as the likelihood of adverse event is potentially significantly lower. Thank you again to GIE for this interview invitation.